Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Today we're going to be checking out Fedora Linux 35. And yes, my friends, the name has changed from Fedora to Fedora Linux. So first up, we're going to be installing Fedora on this virtual machine, apologies. And then we're going to be taking a look at some of the new features. Now this is the release candidate one for Fedora. As of today, Fedora Linux is going to be released next week number 35 but fedora linux has already been given a go to be released and so rc1 is actually very 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 close to what you're going to expect from the final release so without further ado let's go ahead and install it to our hard drive okay so as you can see welcome to fedora 35 fedora 35 installation we're going to have english english united states click on continue And now we have to set the keyboard. Well, it's already US and time and date. I think we should change that to India. Yep. And we should click on done. And then installation automatic partition selected 20 gigabytes of data. We're going to be installing it on this storage pool. And hmm, no disk selected. Interesting. Okay, so after a few hiccups, we have finally been able to choose our virtual disk and now we can begin installation. So we're going to let this happen and we're going to come back and look at Fedora Linux 35 brand new. Right, so after the installation is finished, we are greeted by this beautiful screen that says welcome to Fedora Linux 35. And now we're going to go through and enjoy Fedora Linux 35. Let's click on start setup. Location services, we don't want that on. Automatic problem reporting, no. Click on next. Third party repositories. Oh, this is actually pretty good. Third party repositories provide access to additional software from selected external resources. These include popular apps as well as firmware that is important for some devices. We are obviously going to want it to be on. Click on next. We're now going to create online accounts. We can keep on. We can skip. And now we're going to give my full name. Well, let's just say it's Anirban. Username is Anirban, and we're going to click on next. Now they have an inter interesting option: enterprise login. I'm not sure what this is, but let's move on from now. Let's click on next. Set a password. Yep. And now we can start using Fedora Linux 35. Okay, so we are greeted by GNOME 41, which is one of the biggest highlights of Fedora 35. We're going to take a tour because we're interested, right? Okay, so learn about the key features in Fedora Linux 35 Workstation Edition. Start, get an overview, press the super key to see open windows and apps. Yeah, that's the standard. Click on next. Just type to search, or you click on start, terminal, yeah, there it is. Okay. Next, keep on top with the workspaces, easily organize windows with workspaces view. So if you click on activities, we have our workspaces by default. It's horizontal, which was started by GNOME 40. Let's click on next, up and down for overview. Now I'm on a virtual machine, so no gestures today, unfortunately. But these gestures are super handy if you're someone who is installing Fedora 35 on your laptop. That's it. Thank you. So, this is a fresh boot. First order of business, we're going to press super, go into the terminal, and we're going to see a few of the things. First up, let's go uname A. So we are on the 5.14 kernel very recent and this is going to be especially useful if you're going to have an nvidia sorry an amd graphics card and you're you will rely on the message drivers the open source drivers for gaming so this is going to be very important all right let's move on now let's do htop and see what kind of resource consumption we have on a fresh boot let's go ahead and enter top okay we have top so 
it appears to be 1.4 gigabytes used okay that's uh, that's that's on the higher side but well you know it's pretty much standard if you're logged into Fedora Linux and you have a few applications open this is this is pretty standard so I'm not worried about it let's close the terminal and let's go into and now for everyone's favorite we're going to have Neofet hmm not found now that we have Neofet let's see yep 5.14 kernel you have so no flat packs out of the box and we're using gnome 41 so quickly let's get out of the terminal and see what else we got oh and one of the important things that they changed in fedora is when you click over here your app tray you get wired connection you get settings you get your usual power out but this is new you get a power manager so you can have your power saver and by default it's set to balanced which is of course how it normally is so if you're on a laptop this is going to help you a lot or even if you're on a desktop this could help you depending on if you're trying to save power or if you're not doing a whole lot on your computer so that could be something which is very useful so this is the default wallpaper that you get we're going to right click on it and we're going to go to settings let's go to about and so by default the name of the device is Fedora Now we can see Fedora Linux 35 instead of Fedora like I mentioned 64-bit GNOME 41 which is a highlight this is an increment over GNOME 40 which was the default in Fedora 34 and by default we're using Wayland which is very cool because adopting Wayland is crucial and even Nvidia has provided latest drivers so that you can have better support on Wayland so it's very cool to see progress being made in this section as for the rest of the settings this is pretty much your standard gnome settings that you get one of the things that they changed in gnome 41 are these buttons so I think they changed it because they look a bit different and they, you also get this nice little round icon which is bigger, I think, from the earlier GNOMEs. I'm not too sure about that. So let's move on. So the biggest change that was introduced in GNOME 40 and is carried over to GNOME 41 with a bit more polish is if you click on activities, you get your workspaces in a horizontal manner instead of a vertical manner. Now let's say I open Firefox. So first, now that we have Firefox, let's check the version number real quick and then we'll move on. So I guess it's in help and about Firefox. Yeah, so 93 and we are using the RPM packaging for Firefox, which is cool. It's not a snap like Ubuntu did or Canonical did rather. So now that we have an app open, let's hit super. So we are in this space. Now if I hit super again, it'll go back to your desktop. But if I click on applications, you will have your application list. And what you could do is you could drag and drop your applications from one soup, from one workspace to another, and it'll automatically create another workspace. This is called dynamic workspaces. So before we jump in as to what's new in Fedora 35, let's go ahead and check some of the version numbers of the application. So let's say calculator. And as you can see, it's it's a I think I think they modified it. It looks it looks better, honestly. Because I'm using Pop OS by default, so Fedora 34, yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time. But yeah, about calculator. And we are on 41, so that's that's pretty good. Let's go ahead, click on show applications so by default you have these applications as you can see contacts weather clocks maps you know it's not too it's not too many applications but these are what you're going to need anyways so it's better that they have it you click on this little dot and it takes you to the second page and you also have LibreOffice writer you have your entire suite you have Rhythmbox, and the tour was what we saw when we first 
booted up Fedora Linux 35. Let's open Writer and check a few things real quick. Okay, so we are on 7.2. Let's see, let's go to help about LibreOffice. And we are using 7.2.1.2. We're on the 5.14 kernel like we saw. Let's see if dictionary support is working out of the box. Linux is a very good system to use. And yeah, so it works. It works pretty good. Don't save. Yeah, these buttons, these buttons are definitely new. I don't remember seeing them. At least they're not in GNOME 3.38. So that's a that's a huge upgrade if you're coming from an older uh, GNOME environment to GNOME 41. If you're switching to Fedora or something, this is this is really good. All right, so now we're going to open up applications and let's see they have made changes yeah it, it looks kind of different software lets you install all the software you need yes we understand thank you browse software okay yeah this definitely looks prettier than your standard gnome software center which is found in older versions 43.x yeah it's it's pretty i love these colors man let's go full screen and yeah, so here we have your editor choices and here you have your other categories. Let's say we click on Inkscape. Okay, so here we are in Inkscape. As you can see, logo, install, screenshots, they're the same, but this portion has been improved a lot. As you can see, it looks beautiful, it's different. It's unsafe, probably because it's a flat pack, but well, it's not. It's not unsafe. So here you can choose if, it, if you're going to install an RPM package or if you're going to install a Flathub package, which I think is super handy. You have your name, you have a little description. Let's click on show more. And so yeah, it gives a very short description. It mentions your download size and it also says need 642 MB of additional download systems because this is a flat pack. So this is desktop only, so it works on desktops and laptops, and there is no age rating. You also have a version history. Let's click over here. And yeah, so we have a pretty good version history, which goes back a long time. That's very good to see. And this is community build, so yeah, that's that. We don't have metadata, unfortunately. And we also have reviews. As you can see, Inkscape is a pretty good app if you are into graphics and stuff. All right, so that was that was great actually. Let's click on create and see what's under here. Okay, we have Ardour, Amarok, Blender. Let's click on Blender. Oh yeah, I love these screenshots, man. It's very it's it looks very professional. This page totally and you could have you could go to the project website so this portion is the metadata portion you could go to the project website you could donate which i think is a really cool thing to do you could report an issue you could ask for help and you could also get involved in helping blender be better if you are one of those guys that know how to do it go for it okay that's that's pretty good and another thing you have blue ticks over here these indicate as you, by, as you must have understood that these apps are installed on our system. So let's just jump out of this and let's create another workspace. So yeah, that's how you switch workspaces. You press control alt and right arrow or left arrow, depending on if you're a keyboard and mouse user, or if you're using your touchpad, then you don't need to worry about that. So apart from that, we have a few behind the scene upgrades to talk about. We have improved 3D support for NVIDIA drivers when using apps that don't have native Wayland support. The default Python version in this is 3.10, which rolled out on October and Python 3.5 is no longer supported. The node interpreter version is 16 by default, PHP is at eight, and the RPM package manager is 4.17. Now, Fedora Linux 35 also has DNS over TLS built in, which is a way more secure way to get IP addresses from the internet. So overall, that was a quick look at Fedora Linux 35. You could expect this to be 
officially available in the next week within a few days so with that i would like to close this video thank you guys for sticking around if you made it to this far in the video well i don't know what to say to you hats off thank you very much for sticking around and i'll see you guys next time peace